Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Brothers and sisters, I just received some significant news about a beloved brother. Um, and what I wanted to ask in this particular lesson, and this is a rhetorical question, are you in a position where you can keep another brother's and or sister's secrets? Okay? Because we're all working out our salvation with fear and trembling. But say if a beloved brother or sister comes to you and speaks with you and shares certain things with you and confides in you, what would you do with that information? How would you listen to that information? To what, you, what are you going to do after that information is shared with you? Let's jump right into the lesson. Because James chapter 5 verse 16 tells us, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for one another. I'll read it again. And pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We go down to the King James Version because I like how it like how it explains it, right? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, right? Like what the like I like what the Berean Bible says: the prayer of a righteous man has great power to prevail. And let's get an example of that in the next precept. Elijah was a human being, meaning he had a nature, right, like ours. And it reads, even as we were, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Right? How do we know Elijah was righteous? Because the scripture says, the Lord does not listen to sinners, but his ears are open to what the prayers of the righteous. Let's get another example of that. What do we see this at? In Genesis chapter 20, verse 17. Then Abraham prayed to Yahweh, and Yahweh healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants, meaning his slaves, so that they could have children again. Let's just use this as an example. A beloved brother can come to you discussing erectile dysfunction, or a sister can come to you discussing sexual frustration, some issues within her marriage. You understand? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to turn and backbite and talk about the brother? Certain information that I learned in life is going to, from a beloved brother or sister is going to come by your ears so you can pray for them and that the Lord will heal them. Okay, let's go from there. Let's go to Job. Let's look at the situation with Job, for example. Job chapter 42, verse 8. And it reads, So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. You, and you remember the story of Job. Remember everything that, everything that Job said to them. You know, Job was dealing with them righteously even in his grief even while the Lord was testing him and refining him. You understand? But the point I wanted to put emphasizes on here is, he says, my servant Job will pray for you. The Lord said, go to him, and my, Lord, my servant Job will pray for you. As I said before, brothers, you'll receive certain information that the brother may come and confess his sins to you, right? Or he may confess something he may be dealing with, right? Because we're all going through it. You have to deal wisely with him, have wise counsel for him, but also turn and pray for him. Let's get another example. And you sisters too as well, right? First King chapter 13, verse 6. Then the Lord said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord, right? Intercede with Yahweh your power and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God interceded with Yahweh and the king hand was restored and became as it was before. Well, don't you see it now? I mean, the information that was shared with me, I would never repeat it. But after we had the conversation, I was thinking to myself, you know, what am I going to do with this information now that I received? You know, and, and, and am I 
Am I? A, I was. I felt it. I felt it an honor to be a brother that was trustworthy enough to receive that information. Because we got to learn to keep secrets in this walk, brothers. Not sinful secrets, but righteous secrets. Right? How do we know? Proverbs 11 and 13. Right? A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy friend or a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Even if someone in the truth comes to share something horrific, let me let me take a step back for a second. Something horrific that they did. Let's just say a beloved sister confesses that she had an abortion. Now that's a sin. Or she had several of them. But she's in the truth now. Right? It's your job to keep that a secret and pray that the Lord put the spirits on her, never to put the Holy Spirit on her, never to commit that sin again. Okay? I'm just using various examples. But are you that trustworthy friend? Right? Or are you like these individuals in Sirac? Let's see what Sirac says. Relations with associates, which basically means others and other brothers and sisters in the truth. Verse 16. Those who reveal secrets have destroyed trust and they will never find a friend for themselves. Show affection to friends and be loyal to them. But if you reveal their secrets, don't follow after them. Why? Because you're going to piss them off. They trusted in you. Verse 18. Just as people destroy an enemy, so you have destroyed your friendship with your neighbor. Pardon me, neighbors. Because why? You're telling everyone's business. These people trusted in you. It was something I learned about trust just in the world, man. Before I came into the truth. Once it's broken, it's hard to repair. Like the scripture says, a brother offended is more unyielding than the bars of a castle. Let me get back to the scriptures. Verse 19. As you set a bird free from your hand, so too you have let your neighbors go and you won't catch them. Come on, brothers. Verse 20. Don't pursue them because they have withdrawn far away from you. They have escaped like a gazelle from a trap. Just like they say in the world, hey man, I'm going to get the hell on from around this nigga. You know, that's a common phrase that people use when they, when they are offended by you. Or they see that you cause an offense. You have to understand that, man. You know, you can't reveal a, a friend's secrets. Especially, you know, if it's a brother or sister in this truth. Because there are so many, there's no, not so many, but there are few of us. Let's come out of this. But unfortunately, this is how many of us are in the truth. First Timothy, verse 5 and 13. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only doing, pardon me, and not only do they become idlers, but they also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not. What are the things they ought not to say? They're, just, they're, they're talking. I ain't gonna say what I want to say. But they're talking nonsense, man. They're sharing each other's business. They're running, them out. they're running around. They're babbling. They're, sh they're talking about their neighbors. They're backstabbing. And they're backbiting. That person confided in you, man. Don't share their business. Go to the Lord and pray for them. You understand? Are you trustworthy with another brother's or sister's secrets, man? No matter what they're dealing with, can you give them wise counsel? Can you, can, you, can you build them up in the instruction of the Lord? As the scripture says, we are to bear one another's burdens. Okay? Shalom.